Thank you for watching our video. Please give us a big like, subscribe to our channel for new videos every day with amazing cars. Leave us your opinion in the comment section on the video. Thank you. If you want to hear what automakers really think about the future of the car, it's best to slip outside the enthusiast tent and listen to them preach the autonomous gospel at places like SXSW, the music festival turned tech culture Uber conference. In the automotive future being narrated to crowds of self-selecting early adopters, there's very little driving to be found, instead, that future is brimming with mobility, a term that remains stubbornly vague but will certainly include the theft of your steering wheel at some point. To help explain this transition, there will be events like the Mercedes Me convention. The Me is in fact purposely lower cased. Maybe someone thinks it suggests egoism rather than egotism. The Me Convention is about moving Mercedes from a company that produces hardware to a company that provides mobility, said Dr. Jens Thieimer, Mercedes's VP of Global Marketing Communications, speaking to a gathering of around 40 people at the company's SXSW Media House in Austin, Texas. Essentially, Me Convention is a festival conference mashup concept that Mercedes takes on the road, for the right crowd, as a discourse on topics of the future, as the Imer once called it. The statement moving, to a company that provides mobility could be read as nakedly hostile to the driving enthusiast, the savages at AMG would be mortified, but is perfectly fashionable at South by which was briefly, in the middle of the last decade, a launchpad for hot apps but has since sprawled across TV and film, music, comedy, and gaming, with talk titles like, AI, transforming luxury, fashion, and beauty, VR's implication in the sports industry, and accidentally making the most popular podcasts ever. It's spring break for entrepreneurial tech and culture herds, where a hard networking programmer, an anemic fanboy, and a digital marketing agency junior exec stand outside a bar racing to snag tickets to a surprise comedy show via the fittingly slick SXSW app. In 2018, Mercedes-Benz marked its second year of official SXSW participation. The company sponsored Palm Park, a satellite hangout a few blocks from the Austin Convention Center, hosted talks with executives Britta Seeger, Wilco Stark, and The Imer, created something called the Mercedes-Benz at SXSW Connect and Inspire Cube, and gave rides in a zero-emissions smart microcar that rolled around a downtown Austin street inside a giant inflatable hamster ball. As I was being sealed inside a contraption I asked the driver what the whole thing was about and he said, it's because, I think, in a zero emissions vehicle you won't asphyxiate. I noted that given enough time we would certainly asphyxiate inside a sealed plastic container, just more slowly with a battery powered vehicle than one with a gas engine, to which he shrugged and said, yeah, I guess, and started rolling the ball forward with two foot lurches. Still dying inside the hamster ball, just more slowly would be a fitting tagline if Smart ever decides to take a hard turn into nihilism, like Arby's did. As expected, much of the automotive conversation at SXSW focused on autonomy. Something about the way automakers describe the self-driving future roasts my inner skeptic like a boot to the ear. Even though the more I experience the technology itself the more feasible the wider endeavor seems. When I heard Dr. Thieimer describe autonomous car passengers acting like they do in a plane, they will read, sleep, eat, work, maybe watch films, my first reaction was to note that planes have pilots, plural, who are encouraged to do none of those things. And then I tried to conceive the blind trust necessary to let go of a steering wheel to take a nap when that nap might end with whiplash. But it's become increasingly easy to talk myself in circles about self-driving cars. For example, commercial planes have pilots because the airline is hired to transport people, which makes human oversight a cost-effective safeguard against liability. 
future autonomous buses likely will have the same redundancy for the same reason, but cars owned by individuals won't. For this, there must be a fundamental, human-centric bias that explains a preference for a New York City cab driver, an unknowable sample from the wildly divergent range of illogical, unpredictable, sometimes clinically homicidal human beings, over an autonomous car. Every livery ride is a gamble against death with a complete stranger holding the cards, and it's a choice we as a species make millions of times a day, utterly without thinking. We are all born passengers. Humans turn mighty docile when faced with overwhelming technological convenience, like a dog having his belly scratched, whether that means paying ATM fees to access our own money or letting an integrated home assistant listen to our every word. This suggests the fight over autonomous cars is not about whether it will happen, it will, but who will get the money, and how. This explains the prominent Palm Park signage for Tidal, the streaming entertainment service now available in numerous cities bands vehicles. The partnership was announced last year at the first Me convention, in Frankfurt, and warranted an Iggy Azalea concert, the press release from the event wastes no time in telling you. Basically, the first taste is free. Mercedes-Benz and global music and entertainment platform, Tidal, have announced a long-term partnership. In the next few months, Mercedes-Benz customers that have connected their car to the Mercedes-Me portal will be able to access a complimentary Tidal Hi-Fi membership. Customers will be able to stream more than 50 million songs over 185,000 music videos and hundreds of carefully curated playlists, free of charge for 12 months in their vehicles, on their smartphones or on their music systems at home. When the steering wheel and pedals are gone, a car, even an entire automotive brand, will likely be defined by features such as streaming entertainment services or gaming graphics packages or a productivity-focused suite of apps. Cross-reference a vehicle's real-time GPS coordinates with everything being listened to, watched, used, or interacted with inside that vehicle and suddenly you've got an endlessly churning supply of almighty data, the gold with which all roads to future profitability are paved. Make no mistake, Mercedes-Benz might sponsor conversations about big ideas at Palm Park, but the company is also at SXSW to learn how to listen to every interaction with its customers like Big Tech does. Which is to say, profitably. The future will be funded by surveillance capitalism, sighed a ruffled British man from the stage of a talk called How to Fix the Future, into which I had wandered at random towards the end of my last day at SXSW. We feel disempowered, we humans, he drawled on. We've been promised digital paradises, like the socialist paradise, and the Maoist paradise, were promised to us before. The SXSW app buzzed my phone, notifying me that Tesla CEO Elon Musk was scheduled for a surprise talk, then prompting me to book tickets, then almost immediately informing me tickets were no longer available, an efficient little three-act tragedy delivered, unprompted via push notification. Thank you for watching our video, please give us a big like, subscribe to our channel for new videos every day with amazing cars. Leave us your opinion in the comment section on the video. Thank you.